Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome today to my review of a little watch that has made a big impression since it arrived here in Sydney last month. I think it is fair to say that the entire watch market, the whole watch industry therefore, has been very much riding the crest of a retro dive watch wave over the last nearly 10 years now when you think about it. All of the big Swiss players are represented in the marketplace, they all have their own contributions. Tudor with the Black Bay range, Breitling with the Super Ocean Heritage, Longines with the Legend Diver, and of course my own personal favourite, the Oris Diver 65, a watch that I have owned no less than three of over the last three years. That retro vintage look has certainly filtered into the more affordable $1,000 or less end of the market. The likes of Baltic, Veer and Yema all produce very nice little vintage watches. Not too many ultra affordables though, not too many watches have that retro look for less than 250 US dollars. Indeed, one of the few that I have reviewed on the channel, I reviewed about a year ago, it was the Invicta 1953. Fantastic watch for 100 bucks, but you still cannot buy one for love nor money. That is why I think today's review, the San Martin 6200, let's just call it the San Martin 53, because that is very much the look that they're also going for. I think this watch will hit the spot for a lot of people in terms of size, in terms of price, and in terms of the specifications and the build quality that it offers for the money. You saw the pop-up, I'm sure. This video is sponsored by the San Martin official store on AliExpress. They sent me the watch for free last month and I do not have to send it back. I will therefore leave a link to this watch on their store on AliExpress in the description of the video. They're currently retailing for less than 240 US dollars. I reckon this watch is worth every single one of those dollars. It is beautifully well made, it is beautiful to look at and the bracelet is undoubtedly one of the best bracelets I've seen on anything for less than a grand. Let's flip the camera and have a look at it. So what exactly do you get for your $237.60? Well, if you have purchased a San Martin or a Kronos or a Proxima or even a steel dive before, then this little plastic flight case arrangement should look familiar. You know, there's only a couple of dollars worth here, but probably more sensible long-term than a cardboard box and ensures that the watch and contents arrive to you in good condition. And what have we got here? We have got a warranty condition and user manual, a proper two year stamped and dated warranty card, which is always great to see from a Chinese brand, little plastic hang tag. And as a bonus, they have added in a NATO strap. Now, a bit of a missed opportunity. It's a high quality NATO. I will show you the watch on a NATO later on, but not this one. A couple of nice spring bars here as well. They could have included a Bond NATO though, because this is essentially a homage to the 1953 Rolex Submariner as worn by none other than Sir Sean Connery himself as Bond in Doctor No and various other early movies. And there you are, like I said, I think we should call this one the San Martin 53 because it is clear that they are going for that early, early Submariner look. Interesting though that they have copied some elements of the design but not others. The dial patterning, the indexes are all identical. Slightly different bezel, different handset though, but I'm delighted to see that they have gone for the rivet style bracelet as featured on the original as well. Now in terms of sizing, they have effectively split the difference between the original sub, which was a 36, and the contemporary Submariner, which is 41. They have gone for 38 mil in diameter, just over 13 mil thick, super compact 45 and a half mil lug to lug, 20 millimeter lug width. There is a bit of taper on that rivet bracelet. It is just an outstanding bracelet. I will show you that in more detail in a minute or two. Down to 16, so a taper from 20 down to 16, back up to 18 at the clasp. And this one sized up for me. I only had to remove one link. So I reckon if you are bigger in the wrist than about seven and three quarter inches, you might struggle with this one. But if you are, eight inches or above, then maybe a 38 mil wasn't quite what you were looking for. Sized up for me, this one weighs in at 135 grams. So it's that slightly smaller, slightly lighter style that I thoroughly appreciate. All stainless steel construction, stainless steel case crown, coin edge bezel and full stainless steel bracelet. Piece of double domed, box domed sapphire crystal there. Very nice kind of vintage touch. Obviously the original Submariner would have had a Hesalite acrylic. So they're kind of going for that look, but with modern materials. And we have a ceramic bezel insert, 120 click unidirectional rotating dive time coin edge bezel. Bezel action is absolutely fantastic. No backplate, no bounce at all, and everything lines up beautifully. When have I said that about a $250 watch from certain other large 
large Japanese brands. It has been a while, has it not? And the case finishing, I think, is fantastic for a $240 watch. Super, super fine brushing on the mid case. High polished vintage style crown, unguarded. It is quite a small crown. It's not a super easy crown to grip, but the benefit of a small crown is once it's screwed back in, very unobtrusive when the watch is on the wrist. You've got a longitudinal brushing to those upper lugs, matching a similar finish on the end link of the bracelet. And there is a high polished chamfered edge. Now it starts off slightly thicker at the bottom end of the lug, and then it disappears to nothing when the watch, the crown, the case, the bezel all meet in the middle before then reappearing and doing the same down to the other side of the lug. A very, very nice effect. And you can see a very pleasing bit of vintage style distortion from that box domed sapphire to boot. Let's have a look at the bracelet and check that standard of finishing for $237. I have not seen anything like it for the price or quite a few hundred dollars more. As mentioned in the intro, I have owned three or 65s which have had this rivet style bracelet as well. And this is as well finished as any of those have been. And they are a thousand US plus. So the first three links are unadjustable. Following those, all the other links are adjusted by using two screwdrivers, so one on either side. And as you can see, there are a couple of different finishes. So high polished ends and a brushed upper surface, they're actually separate end pieces. So that is a five link bracelet, if you see what I mean, rather than a three link. The clasp is pretty good as well. It's got that San Martin signature hexagon there. The Logo etched into it, not just stamped on it, and four levels of micro adjust, double security pusher, and it is a proper mill clasp as well. Overall, a seriously, seriously nice bracelet, perfectly suiting the style of watch, and just gorgeous in quality, and zero rattle from the end link. This whole watch is put together beautifully. Very, very solid feeling. Let's have a look at the dial. I'll chuck in some macro here, and clearly they have gone for that 1950s Rolex Submariner look. They have aped the pattern almost exactly, that being a large down-pointing triangle at 12, three rectangles at the three, the six, and the nine, and small circular indexes everywhere else. This dial is just printed. There's a minute track around the outer edge, all nicely legible. San Martin logo printed above the pinion. Now, you can get it sterile if you want to, and I think for a little bit more money, you can get your own custom logo printed if you want to have your name or your favorite football team or whatever the hell you want. San Martin will do that for you. 200 meters, 660 feet in nice vintage italic script and automatic printed above the index at six. Now, if I I pop the thumbnail back in, you can see I must have pulled an old picture of the watch for it. They use the word Submariner printed on the dial. I don't think you can get away with that for more than about five minutes, and I'm delighted that they changed it to automatic rather than Submariner. Nice handset as well. They have gone for Mercedes hands, something which was missing from the original Submariner that had pencil hands instead. They've gone for a slightly different lollipop second hand. There is a small counterbalance and a quite a prominent circular lollipop heading out towards that minute track. Proper DLC coated gold hands, nice and cleanly cut as well. And plenty of C3 vintage old radium style loom on the hands, the indexes and the bezel insert. The loom is really quite good. It has that lovely, rich, deep green that you get from C3 old radium. If I crank the speed up and we head towards the end of the 20 minute test period, you know, it's still hanging on in there. There's always a bit of a price to be paid for the vintage loom, but it is pretty good all round. Like I said, San Martin make a good watch. There are no weak points here at all, including the loom. The case back is entirely sterile. Again, very much like a Rolex of the 50s or a Rolex indeed of 2021. That's what they look like. You can see the solid end links on the bracelet there as well, all very nicely machined, even from the back. What that means is if you are a tinkerer, if you do want to take the case back off this one at some point to adjust the movement or replace it or whatever, you are going to need a specialist tool. Fortunately, they're not expensive to buy. I picked up this head of pie set a couple of years ago and it's actually very good. It has served me well for all of these unusual Rolex and Tudor style case backs. I'll leave a link to that one in the description of the video as well. $13.90 from AliExpress. It's not going to cost you a fortune either. I'm sure you've probably already had a guess as to what movement lay behind that sterile case back, and that guess was the Seiko NH35. Well, give yourself 10 points, because you're right. I usually say that the average Seiko NH35 that I've had through the channel comes in around plus 10 seconds per day, and this one rather proves my point. Plus 11 seconds per day, healthy amplitude, minimal beat error, running at 21,600 vibrations per hour. These really are the mainstay of the sub-$300 end of the watch market. 
24 dual hacking and hand winding, bi-directional winding, a couple of Seiko's goodies like the magic lever system and the Dia Shock anti-shock system. They're rugged, they're robust, they're reliable, and above all else, they're cheap. Let's get it on wrist because it wears very, very sweetly indeed. I love the black and gold colors as well, super vintage. Now, 38 mil in diameter, 45 lug to lug, sounds very, very compact. However, the mid link of the end link does protrude, but it does point downwards. And the fact that it only tapers to 16 and back up to 18 at the clasp means it's a little bulkier than one might have expected, given those diameter dimensions and the, the short lug to lug. It sits really, really neatly on wrist. That dome sapphire crystal adds almost two millimeters. If you just took it from the case back to the top of the bezel, there's barely 11 mil there. It's a very very, very well proportioned and well fitted little piece this one. And that's the overhead shot. Personally, I love a watch this size. I've got the smaller Aquaterra, I've got the Sarbo 33. I really appreciate something that's just a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter than your average 40 mil sports watch. Still pretty legible though. It's got those smaller hands and indexes, but I don't think that makes it any more difficult to read. And I'll chuck in a pocket shot here as well, so you can see what it looks like on my seven inch wrist when I'm outside. This style of watch that tends to be a bit smaller, a bit lighter, I tend to wear them a little bit looser, as you can see there, a little bit lower, a little bit looser. Still nice and comfortable. As I mentioned earlier on, that small crown doesn't dig into the wrist at all. And that's it outside on wrist. Lovely, lovely finish, this thing, generally speaking. Mostly brushed, but a few polished surfaces, notably the edges of the rivet bracelet and those high polished chamfered edges of the watch case. Sits flat, sits flush, sits very nicely on my wrist. So a great little watch this thing. I am enjoying it very much indeed. For $240, you know, it does a lot right. Great build quality, great looks, and I think a great size. If you want a retro look, then it should be slightly smaller, and I think 38 suits it nicely. But is it perfect? How could it possibly be perfect for $240? Did someone order a Flecto meal with a side order of Flecto? There is a serious amount of Flecto coming off of this crystal, and also that shiny, shiny ceramic bezel insert. You know, it says there's some anti-reflective coating on the other side of the crystal. Not that I've noticed, and if there is some, then there could certainly be more. Interesting choice that they've gone for a ceramic insert rather than aluminium. If they'd gone for aluminium, it would have been duller, and it would probably have looked a bit more authentic, but I would probably have moaned about them for going a bit cheap there. As it is, you're gonna have to get used to a bit of reflection, a bit of shine. But I think it overall suits the watch, the crystal, the ceramic bezel insert, and the gold shiny hands. It works as an overall look. The bracelet is lovely as mentioned, but given that this is an unashamedly retro piece, I think they could have gone two mil narrower, meaning the clasp was two mil narrow as well, back up to 16 rather than 18. That would certainly have made it a bit more vintage-y, but it would have made it a bit more delicate as well. So I, I kind of either or, 50-50 on that one, I guess. And the NATO, it's a reasonable quality item. It's a welcome inclusion therefore to the overall package as are the spring bars, but you can't help but feel there's a bit of a missed opportunity there for them to have gone full Connery with a Bond style NATO. Perhaps that's something they will update the package in future. But overall, a very, very impressive little watch. It's handsome, well manufactured and very well priced. San Martin are now seriously ahead above all of the other AliExpress stuff, all of the other China Direct stuff for less than $300. Very, very consistent, high quality product. The Invicta may be cheaper. It may be half the price of this one, but I think this more than justifies the increase in price in terms of the quality, the build, the manufacture, the finishing, the sapphire crystal, and a bracelet that a lot of five, $600 watches would kill for. That's why I think this is the best affordable retro diver you can buy right now. So there you have it. If you like the retro dive watch look, but have a budget of less than 250 US dollars, I reckon this is your man. There just aren't that many other unashamedly retro dive watches out there for the price. And I think this one is fabulous at what it does. Couple of moans and niggles here and there. It is a bit shiny, shiny. You're gonna have to get used to Flecto because of that domed sapphire crystal and the ceramic bezel insert. Maybe it could have done with a little bit more taper on the bracelet and clasp, but the bracelet is outstanding for the money. It is genuinely beautiful. Fabulous tolerances throughout the watch also. Thanks for watching. I will see you in a future video.